Hey everybody, welcome to Average Guy Opinions. I'm your Average Guy, John Corelli. Welcome to part two of Memorial Day, or whatever I'm going to call it. I don't know, but I have more opinions. That's why it's called Average Guy Opinions uh, about this holiday and how it's celebrated, how I've seen it kind of misguided and twisted into something that if you don't participate in this, if you don't stand up every time a, one troop, I'm going to tell you about this story real quick, but one troop is celebrated um, that, that you're, you're the problem, that if you have a dissenting view, you're the problem. No, you're not. You're actually part of the solution if you're not genuflecting every time we celebrate the military. Because I've known some amazing military people. My stepdad, good guy. My uh, my stepbrother, also good guy. A lot of good people have been in the military, amazing people. A lot of shitty people have been in the military, too. Now, let's not sugarcoat it like every person that volunteers for that service does great and ends up great. Okay? They're 18 year olds. They're called jarheads in the Marines for a reason because they're easy to fill up that jar and get them to do what you want to do. There's a reason we, we recruit 18 year olds, not 25 year olds, because at 18, you're a lot more malleable and a lot more prone to propaganda than you are when you're 25 and your brain's fully developed. Okay. So here, but to go back to my story, one of them that really stands out to me, this is a few years ago. Uh, I went to an avalanche game. Uh, with uh, you know Colorado Avalanche, our local NHL team, with my friend Mike Davis, who I used to do a, a po hockey podcast with. I had a lot of fun with that anyway, by the way. Um, we, we went to a game, and uh, they had a big to-do between, between the periods. For one guy who was in the Navy, I think all he did was the four-year stint. He may have been a career guy, but I'm not 100% sure. But I thought it was just a four-year stint. And he, he spent it on a boat. They did his whole career. He was on a boat for four years. He didn't jump in front of bullets. He didn't shoot down a plane that was going to destroy other people. He was on a boat for four years. And everyone in that fucking 17, 19,000 uh, seat arena stood. Except for me and Mike. We sat on our asses. And I was waiting to catch him shit for it, to be honest. But I'm like, no. He's a guy. He's getting benefits. He got front seats. He's getting a standing O from 20,000 people. I mean, it's crazy. And so... Oh, and, and what happened later that night, uh, I think in, in, within the period, so this was between periods where everyone's kind of sitting around or getting beers, right? And psh, we have the big party for the wonderful Navy guy, right? Who's apparently perfect. Later, during the period, just like in a little timeout, not in a big timeout, like during the two periods, which lasts usually 15 to 20 minutes, uh, there's an entire section of teachers. And the... the, and the it was like 20, I mean, not the entire section, but there was a good, that section had been reserved uh, for this. It was a bunch of teachers, probably 50, maybe 100. And uh, they say, oh, yeah, and we got some teachers from so-and-so county or district. And it's like, big fucking deal. Why? <laughs> Why? Those teachers probably protect your freedoms as much, if not more, than the military guys. Military guys are all working for the military industrial complex. Don't you know that? Like I said, the last legitimate war, I said this in part one, was World War II. And even then you could make an argument that not necessarily because uh, when Hawaii was attacked by the Japanese in, in, on December 7th, 1941, it was only our territory. It was not a state yet. So you could really make it, it'd be a flimsy argument. You can make an argument that the United States truly was not attacked, right? I mean, so they, they, they were. I mean, they were attacking our fleet. But still, that's the last legitimate war, in my opinion, that we were in. So, more about the military. You know, like I said, I've known guys uh, that have been great, known guys that have been terrible. One of the guys uh, I know very, very well, and complained a lot on this channel, to be, to be quite honest, um, who did not opt for military service, was my father. My dad dodged the draft. He dodged the Vietnam draft. And I, honestly, I'm proud of him. Um, really proud of the guy. Um, I may have mentioned this in the past, too. Maybe not. You know, I, I think, uh, I mean, since he, my father will probably not last the year, according to his doctor, he should not. Um, and this is hard because uh, despite all the differences between me and my dad, I still love the man. Um, I still try to visit him a couple times a week and try to make the best of it. Um, but, you know, if he wouldn't have dodged that draft and then a couple years later had sex with my mom, <laughs> I wouldn't be here. And I've had a good life. I've had a really good life. And so uh, thank you, Dad, for this Memorial Day. I memorialize you for passing on going to a strange country 
like 80% of America's Americans either couldn't name or didn't know where it was when, when Vietnam started in the, in the sixties. But thank you. My memorial is to you today to say thank you for passing on that, not either getting killed or messed up or in some cosmic way, not meeting my mother most likely and having me. So thank you, dad. Thanks for the gift of life. Thanks for not having to go kill Vietnamese people. Thanks for not getting in some firefight and coming back all dead or screwed up. So yeah, it's a big deal for me that he did that. Tell you how he did it, because why not? Um, what are, are, are the are the authorities going to find out about this and go chase him down? I don't think so. If they do, um, that's shitty. And if you tell the authorities, you're shitty. So, but here's what, so here's what the deal was. My, my uncle went to Vietnam. He was a pilot. He did one or two tours and, um, he came back. And so he was a pilot, which pilots got off light unless they got shot down like John McCain, but pilots got off light compared to the, you know, the, the infantry, the ground troops. Right. Um, but he said he knew he saw what other people went through and he told my dad, his younger brother by two years said, you don't want any of this shit. And, uh, so my dad's like, what do I do? Get into college? Not really an option. Go to Canada, an option, but not as good of one. No, I'm going to tell you what you do. My uncle told my dad and showed my dad how you could, uh, say you were a diabetic and then quote unquote, prove you're a diabetic. And here's what he did. So back in those days, it was random as to how you would get picked for the draft. There'd be a list of, according to my uncle and my dad, the stories I've heard, there'd be a list. And of course they hit the urban centers hard. Of course there's more people there. You're going to get more recruits. You're going to get more guys to send to the meat grinder. So my, my uh, dad said that they just went off the, the top six names that were on this list. They didn't, some guys maybe go from the bottom, maybe go random, who knows? But in this case, you know, being Corelli, he was in the top six names alphabetically. And uh, so he goes, oh, shit, I've been drafted. And um, my uncle's like, here's what we're going to do. And so he has my dad tell, tell the, I don't know if it was the Marines, the Army, whoever it was, the draft board, I don't know, say, I'm a diabetic. Now, you got to remember, this is 1965, 64, I think 65, um, that tells him, he tells them he's a diabetic. And back in 1965, they, they wouldn't just prick your blood right there and they didn't have the... You know, they didn't have the technology to check right there and then. So they said, okay, Mr. Crowley, come back in uh, in three days and we're going to give you a blood test and you need to prove that you're diabetic. And so my with my uncle's help, my dad starved himself for those three days. Um, luckily, the, on the third day when he was supposed to come back, it was set at a certain time. And my uncle knew that, hey, you're going to take the... I, he had some pure form of glucose. I don't know exactly what it was. But he's like, you're going you're gonna to slam this with a, with a glass of orange juice so many hours before your blood test and you're going to go in there and your blood's going to be really high blood sugar and it's, it's going to spike and you will appear diabetic and they did it and it fucking worked isn't that amazing um yeah and so my dad did not have to go to vietnam here's part of the problem i have with my dad though my dad often wears hats that says he's a vietnam veteran so i really really uh he loses my respect for that he does i was like you don't have to go boasting that you dodged the Vietnam draft, but to act like you were there is embarrassing. And I don't know how you do it, to be honest, right? It's one thing to say you were at Woodstock when you weren't. It's quite another to say you were in the Vietnam War when you weren't. So, uh, you know, these are the these are the, the yins and the yangs and the dichotomies of man. Um, if I use that word right, I'm an average guy, I don't know. But, <laughs> but having said that... Um, I'm, I'm still happy Memorial Day to, to the people that served, obviously. Yes, you deserve a day. You deserve respect. But there are some people, like I said at the beginning of this part, and this will be the last part, there are not, you're not all angels. There are many great, great men who have done great, great things in the name of war and peace and the military. There are some pieces of shit, and I've met them, that brag about how they were in the military bragged about how they killed guys, bragged about how they tortured people, and then come back and, and get hero pussy because of it. It's disgusting. And so, Dad, thanks for not joining that world. Once again, thank you for giving me a shot at life, which I've, at 56, I'm feeling really good about it. I got this stupid cat shirt. Things are good. Anyway, so there's a kind of a, a deconstruction of Memorial Day from my point of view. 
It's definitely a dissenting point of view, and I get that, and I may receive some hate, and I may not. It's just an opinion. All right, thanks, guys. Enjoy your Memorial Day, and that. Enjoy your Memorial Day, or night, or afternoon, or evening, or sunshine, or whatever. I'm losing my mind. Thank you so much for listening. Talk to you next time.